little too much room. A little too much room. Okay. This is Epic History TV. How to build the perfect castle, which I have been really looking at doing. And then we all need a castle. So, this wasn't a request. Um, I just remembered that I really liked Epic History TV and I was scrolling through and I think I've done all their videos. <laughs> so, I got my pretzels and some dill pickle mustard and some rum and coke and um, sorry, that was nothing. And it's video time. Lego. In Europe's Middle Ages, castles dominated not just warfare, but society itself. Strongholds are as old as war, but the medieval castle was unique. I am still amazed at how they could get all the material up there and, and just, that, that's just fascinating to me. Like I'm the only one, right? A refuge and a projection of military force, a lordly residence and symbol of power, a centre of justice and government. Today, castle ruins are found from the Atlantic coast to the hills of Syria. Dramatic and poignant reminders of a lost feudal world. Stupid thing. I didn't realize there were castles in Syria. Why wouldn't there have been? Sorry. There was no single blueprint for the castle. Every one was unique. But by analyzing key trends over four centuries, Epic History TV is proud to present its guide to building the perfect castle. Interesting. The medieval castle was the product of a feudal world. A world we'll explore with help from our video sponsor, Crusader Kings 3. Using the in-game map, we can zoom in on 9th century France, the birthplace of feudalism. This was a time when royal authority was in crisis, as Frankish kings, the heirs of Charlemagne, struggled to control unruly nobles and fight off Viking armies. Increasingly, the king would grant a piece of land, known as a fief, and the promise of protection to a lord. The lord became the king's vassal, swearing an oath of loyalty or fealty, and providing military service when required. These feudal lords began to build fortified bases across the land, in which to live and from which to impose their authority on their new domains. These were the first medieval castles. If you'd like to experience the challenge of feudal lordship for yourself, we can recommend Crusader Kings 3, a new game from Paradox and our video sponsor. It's set in a richly detailed medieval world in which your task is to guide your chosen dynasty to power. When building a new I hope I didn't skip over too much. I apologize if I did. Castle. The first and most important consideration is location. A castle should dominate the landscape, with good views in all directions, so hills are ideal. Steep slopes and river bends can be used to limit approach routes, making the site easier to defend. And for building work, a local source of stone, wood and soil is essential, as transporting these materials over medieval roads is more expensive than the materials themselves. There must also be a secure local source of fresh water and food to sustain the castle's occupants. <coughs> yeah. A reliable starter castle is the Mott and Bailey, popular with the Normans, who built hundreds across England and Wales during the Norman Conquest. Starter castle. The Mott is a mound, either natural or built by hand, as seen here in the Bio Tapestry. It's not just a pile of mud, though. These coloured bands are thought to represent alternating layers of stone and clay, which will increase stability. 
Sometimes they even used stone or timber foundations. A typical mot is 8 metres high and up to 50 metres across. Its top can be defended by a simple wooden palisade and a tower, living quarters for the Lord and his entourage, and last refuge in case of attack. An earth ditch and palisade should enclose the bailey to protect important buildings such as a hall, stables, kitchen, stores and a forge. Timber palisades are vulnerable to fire and rot, so will ideally be replaced by an enclosing stone wall, known as a curtain wall, as soon as possible. This creates the enceinte, or main defensive enclosure. A curtain wall should have crenellations, to protect soldiers of the garrison during an attack, as they shoot their bows or crossbows at the enemy. A concealed postern gate, or sally port, can be used during a siege to smuggle messages in and out of the castle, or to launch surprise attacks on the enemy. In parts of France, such as Anjou and Poitou, castle builders ignored the Mott and Bailey approach and constructed strong stone towers. Yeah. In French, it's called a donjon, the origin of the word dungeon. In England, it's known as the keep. A keep offers better security and accommodation than a wooden tower. I'm gonna guess there was something here because there's a, there's a, uh, I'm said a fence, a gate, and there's steps and there's nothing. So there, I'm gonna guess there was something. What? But the decoration there. Maybe that was steps. That made like a ladder. Or they just built that, and then whoever the idiot was that walked out there, they just closed the, the gate and they locked it, and they were like, meh, have fun. Huh. But if you try to build one on top of a mot, its weight will cause it to collapse. Some opt for a compromise, a shell keep, which keeps the mot and replaces its wooden palisade with a circular stone wall. That's cool. But a truly imposing keep will have to be built from scratch on carefully prepared foundations. A typical early stone keep is rectangular, between two and four storeys high, with walls up to six metres thick. Ooh, Construction good. might take up to ten years and cost a fortune, so large keeps are only built by monarchs and powerful nobles. The biggest keeps have towers at each corner. Within there might be a hall for meals and entertainment, private apartments, a chapel, and storerooms. A forebuilding creates an impressive and well-guarded entrance, which should be at first floor level, accessed by a wooden staircase which can be removed in case of attack. If the keep has a cellar, this is an ideal space to store extra provisions, not for chaining up prisoners in the dungeons of popular imagination. Early keeps are square or rectangular, but later come in many shapes and sizes. King Philippe Augustus of France was particularly fond of circular keeps. Perhaps the most eye-catching of all is Castel del Monte in southern Italy. Built that is beautiful. Oh my god, that one's amazing. Wow. By Emperor Frederick II. 
Its elaborate polygonal structure reminds us that the perfect castle must be elegant as well as formidable. Wow, that one's amazing. Towers are to project forward so that when the enemy approaches, they may be wounded by missiles from the tower. Sure. The curtain wall should be strengthened by flanking towers at regular intervals. These project forward from the wall, so archers can shoot at attacking enemies with enfilade fire. Or, put another way, attackers will come under fire from the wall ahead of them, as well as from towers to the right and left. Square towers offer large amounts of extra space for living quarters and storage. But their corners are a weak point that can be targeted by enemy stone-throwing artillery, such as a trebuchet. Sorry for pausing. What's the difference between a trebuchet and a catapult? Is it the same thing? Is it... I don't know. I apologize. One of you smart people out there who watches my videos, you'll know. <laughs> So round towers may be a better option. The choice is often one of taste, fashion and or cost. Square towers, round towers and D-shaped towers were all common across Europe and many castles feature a mix of types. In some places, it was possible to cut costs by reusing old Roman fortifications, as at Pevensey and Porchester on England's south coast. Here, the Normans simply built a stone keep within the walls of an old Roman shore fort, saving time, labour, and money. Also, saves you one added uh, layer of protection that you would have had to build, anyways, right? Loopholes, or arrow slits, are important additions for any tower or wall section. The earliest versions are simple vertical slits, but from the 14th century, more decorative cross shapes are common. In the event of a siege, wooden hoardings, sometimes called brattice work, can be built out over the walls, to allow the garrison to rain boiling water and rocks onto the attacking enemy. Damn. Portcullis, portcullis, which hangs on iron chains and ropes. Oh, hold on, I, I read Barbarian. At a Barbican, Barbican, before the gate, and place in its entrance a Portcullis? They'll say it. Sorry. The obvious focus for an attack is the mm. castle's main Looks gate, good. so its defences, known as the gatehouse, must be especially strong. The ideal solution is to add towers on each side of the gateway, to add an outer and inner gate, and at least one, if not several, portcullises. These metal lattice gates can be dropped vertically to trap attackers in a kill zone. The garrison can then use murder holes in the ceiling and walls to finish off the intruders. I always, I always uh, thought if you had two gates, now I didn't know they had murder holes, but I always thought that you could have like, I want to say big boulders, but but big like casualty creating rocks or something like that that would I'm pointing at the screen and you can't see that could be placed all around here and all you'd have to do is just start pushing them and you know just start caving the whole thing in or even I keep I'm pointing at the screen like you see what I'm doing or have something like right here that everyone would know not to walk on and somehow you can rig it to collapse? Nah, that won't be a little too difficult back then. 
I like this The main video. gate can be further protected by a drawbridge over the outer moat or ditch, which can be raised by chains as an enemy approaches. Through the Middle Ages, gatehouses became increasingly powerful. I just want to say, again, sorry. My mother was born in Munich, Germany on the military base. When she was really young, she moved to Wales. So she lived there until she was 16 and then they moved to America. But every time I see these Wales, I always wonder if she saw these. And I, I can't ask her, my mom passed, but I always wanted to know it, how many of these she's seen because I'm sure she saw a lot of them. So whenever I see whales, I kind of, I get sentimental. With multiple drawbridges, gates, and portcullises, the approach covered by looming towers, and every wall and ceiling studded with loopholes and murder holes. Some of the most formidable gatehouses are found in the castles built by Edward I to subdue Wales in the late 13th century. Such imposing wall defences began to make a massive keep seem superfluous, so many of these castles were built without a keep at all. Our castle is now an imposing fortress, able to withstand a siege of several months, if properly provisioned. But to be considered truly epic, a castle should have a second curtain wall, enclosing an outer bailey, with its own towers and gatehouse. You're gonna, and I know they covered it, but are you growing crops inside the fort? Would you have enough room? I'm asking for a friend. I clearly know the Gate houses should be positioned at angles to the approach route, so any attacker has to twist and turn, rather than make a direct rush at the gate. Towers and walls should now feature stone machicolations for dropping rocks on the enemy. Far more sophisticated than temporary wooden hoardings. The new outer bailey, or ward, allows more buildings to be brought within the castle's defences. Not forgetting that a medieval castle is as much a residence as fortification. Perhaps a new, grander hall for entertaining your household and important guests. Kitchen gardens and extra living quarters. Sorry for asking before he explained it. The outer ditch or moat can be flooded with water to create an extra layer of defence. A water moat also has decorative value and can be a source of fresh fish. A final oh, flourish, a barbican, an outlying fortification that adds yet another layer of defence to the main entrance. So that's the barbican. This is now a fine and formidable example of a concentric castle. <coughs> its design will force any attacker <coughs> to overcome successive layers of strong defence to reach the final refuge, the keep. If properly garrisoned and supplied, a castle like this was virtually impregnable until the age of gunpowder. Yeah, I guess a cannon firing at that would could really do some damage. As we have seen, there was no single blueprint for the medieval castle. Yeah. Each was built to take advantage of the landscape, to incorporate the latest military thinking, and reflect regional styles and personal taste. The most awe-inspiring examples from the castle's golden age include Crac de Chevalier, the supposedly impregnable crusader fortress of the Knights Hospitaller. Dover Castle, known as the Key to England, and Malbork Castle, the gigantic brick-built headquarters of the Teutonic Knights. By the 15th century, the castle's role was in steep decline, in part due to the rise of gunpowder weapons, such as cannon. 
but more fundamentally because the feudal world that gave rise to the castle had fallen away, to be replaced by professionalised armies and centralised royal authority. As the age of powerful feudal lords ended, so too did the age of the castle. Most would ultimately slide into ruin, their military role replaced by artillery forts, their residential role taken over by palaces and stately homes, as the age of the castle gave way to the age of the chateau. Thanks again to- That's the next video Epic History needs to make. The chateaus of the world. <laughs> this is good. I apologize for all the questions. Um, man, that one in Italy. God, that was beautiful. Anyone, um, anybody who watched my videos uh, from another country, you ever been to any of these castles? I would love to. But I'm lazy. Outside of, you know, working... 50 hours <laughs> I don't want to do anything I don't want to go there I can barely convince myself to read and I got books behind me so all right I'm gonna end this here this is good like and subscribe or epic history TV is gonna go under that's what they told me so have a good day have a good night